In this video we will be walking you through Dscribe, the software used for the Nanoscribe GT2. To start, open your STL file in your folder and this will bring up Dscribe. This is what the interface looks like, with your 3D design on the left and a control column on the right. Here you can change the X, Y, and Z orientation, which is helpful if you want to print your structure in a different orientation than how you made it. You can also change the sizing of your part. What is cool about this is that it will change all the scales, so your part will keep the same ratios while resizing. Next, there is Fixed versus Adaptive Slicing Mode. Fixed mode will slice your design in the Z direction to create layers that will all be the same thickness. You can change the thickness and you can also see how that affects the number of slices. When you choose Adaptive mode, the computer will not make each layer the same but instead alter the thicknesses to print more accurately and efficiently. This is helpful if you have a structure with intricate details that need high resolution. Under Slicing Distance, you can set the minimum and maximum thickness for the layers. When the sliding bar is closer to average, the layers will be more around the same thickness but still have deviation. When it is closer to max, the computer will make as many layers as possible to have the highest resolution. Also keep in mind that the number of layers you have will affect the overall print time. Now you can either choose to have your structure completely filled in as a solid or made into an outer shell with the option to add internal support through scaffolding. In shell mode, the hatching distance will control the thickness of the shell and the internal scaffolding. You have the option to choose which shape of scaffolding you want or if you want your structure to be hollow. However, if you choose hollow, your print could collapse in on itself depending on your design. On the output page, you decide if you want to print in Galvo or Piezo mode. You can also choose the direction the laser will move to create each layer, laser exposure, and configuration. Here you can also create your design into an array, which will multiply it. This could be helpful if you are making something such as microneedles. Now you can choose whether or not to split your design. This tells the laser to create one colored box at a time as opposed to the whole design. This is helpful if you have an especially large print. You can change the size, placement, and shape of the blocks. Generally, it is better to not split your design if possible. Now the computer generates the GWL file that will go to the nanoscribe. Here you can change the laser power, interface, and scanning speed. By clicking F5, you can see a simulation of your print which shows how the nanoscribe will make it and show how long it will take to print. This one will take about 1 minute and 42 seconds. Now we are going to take the same design but make it in solid mode to compare how that would be printed. You can see how the same design now takes around 6 minutes to print.
Now your design is ready and you can go on to the next step of the printing process.